Good afternoon boys and girls, you are watching episode 17 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, here on Facebook Live. I think we should start by smelling a perfume. And this is one that I received a little while ago, but uh, for various reasons I haven't actually got around to smelling it and I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to, to try to um, find out what it's like. Uh, it is this one, it is the latest entry in Mugler's Les, as Les <laughs> try saying that quickly in Mugler's Les Exception range, and it's called Mystic Aromatic. So, without further ado, regular viewers will know that I very rudely hold off with my hellos and greetings and what have you until after I've done the first first perfume. I think we should get into this. The the, the packaging of the exceptions or exception is always quite substantial and beautiful. Not that I'm a packaging geek anyway. Um, they all come in these standard black boxes, somewhat coffin-like, but then that's quite appropriate. And then you get this um, clamp. I don't know, is it a, is, I suppose it is a sort of clamp that you have to slide out and then you get the reveal. I can't get my left and right correct way around today because I'm seeing things the way you're seeing them as opposed to on Instagram when things are the wrong way around. Uh, so here we go. I think I should just get straight into this. Mystic Aromatic. Um, generally speaking, I think the exceptions range is probably the very best thing that Mugler are doing at the moment. There are some that I like more than others. Um, almost goes without saying. I mean, with almost every single brand, there are some things that I like more than others. Um, but the ones that I I, I like, I, I really do love. And I'm thinking here, for example, of ones like um, Oriental Express or uh, Cuir Impertinent, uh, the, the Fougère, is it called Fougère Furieuse? I think that's the name. Really, really wonderful. Uh, a lot of people like um, Over the Musk. I, I wasn't quite so keen on that one. I, I, I think I found it a little bit simplistic. Um, the idea behind this range is that uh, they revisit um, well-known familiar perfumery forms. They try to do them well, execute them well, and, and then always bring a little bit of an unexpected twist uh, so, that, so that they're sort of updating them, making them a little bit more modern, making them a little bit more contemporary. Um, so I have no idea what this one's going to be like. It's got the word aromatic in the name, so that gives us a bit, little bit of a clue. Here we go. Mystic Aromatic, the latest from the Les Exceptions from Mugler, opens episode 17 of Love at First Scent. Okay, um, certainly aromatic in the sense that it seems to be full of herbs. There is, there's a definite herb salad thing going on here. Um, I'm thinking, you know, tarragon and thyme and basil. Quite, quite, um, quite bitter herbs. Maybe a suggestion of parsley in there. I'm waiting for the mystical side to appear. I'm very impatient on these videos. Um, in, in my reviews, you know, in, in the written reviews, I mean, that appear on, on the blog on Persilaise.com, that I've, I've taken lots and lots of time to think about um, my views on the perfume. The, the reviews are a, res a result of having worn the perfume several times. But here, I kind of want to make an instant judgment. And I'm waiting for the mysticism. There is a softness that seems to be coming. A kind of fuzziness. Um, But, but so far, it's it's not as intriguing as, so far, I mean, we, 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 it goes without saying that we must never ever judge a perfume on a first spray. But in these videos, we kind of put that to one side and we try to see how much of a conclusion we can come to on, on, a, on, an, initial <clears throat> on an initial spray, on a quick spray. The ones that are the best in this range, so things like Oriental Express and Cuir Impertinent, uh, Hot Cologne, I really, really love Hot Cologne as well. 
those ones draw you in. They, they, they have many layers, they offer lots of different contrasts. But so far this is, this is a herb salad waiting for a good dressing. Um, one thing that has to be said, how many of you have tried this by the way, because it, it, it has been out, uh, out there already for some time. The interesting thing about these ones, um, when the range started they were made uh, either solely by Olivier Polge, who then moved on to Chanel, and because he's now the in-house nose at Chanel, he's not allowed to make perfumes for any other brands. Some of them were made in collaboration with Jean-Christophe Herrault, and now, unless I'm mistaken, they're all made by Jean-Christophe Herrault. Roxana, I've seen your comment, I'm not ignoring it, I will get to it, and, and, and I think the answer is yes, we are going to do that one. Um, the, the one thing that has to be borne in mind with these exceptions is that Jean-Christophe Herrault seems to have a particular thing with creating perfumes that really do smell different on skin as opposed to on the blotter. Now, all perfumes will smell different on skin, but maybe not wildly different. A, a lot of perfumes actually will, will vary only subtly from paper to skin, maybe even fabric to skin. Uh, I know that Thierry Vasser, the, the uh, chief perfumer at Garlin, when he was making the scents which are now in the sort of Arabian collection, I, I don't know what the, 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 the sort of official brand name for them is, but he tested them on fabric because he was told that that is the main way in which Western spray perfumes are applied in the Middle East. So there are these variations, but with a lot of the exceptions from Mugler, the difference between paper and skin is significant. Hot cologne is a, is a prime example. That coffee note just doesn't seem to come out very much um, on, on paper, and yet on skin, you can't avoid it. And then which is the other one? I don't want to say supra-floral, or maybe, I can't even remember, Wonder Bouquet, maybe it was Wonder Bouquet, has a weird yeasty quality, which again doesn't come out very strongly on paper, but very much does on skin. So, on paper, this one, Mystic Aromatic, is, is kind of doing a quiet version of, of, of a sort of restrained 80s masculine. Um, and maybe not much else so far. Maybe what I should do is finish with this one again by spraying it on skin. So, hmm, aromatic, yes. Mystic, maybe not so much. Okay, so we're off to we're off to something of a lukewarm start now. As I lift up my tablet uh, so that I can see what comments people are leaving, because of course I missed a few comments. Right here we go. So thank you very much to everybody for tuning in. This is episode seventeen of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace. Today coming to you uh, live from Facebook. Please say hello, join in. Um, ask questions, make comments, give me lots of hearts and thumbs up and things like that. There are lots and lots of thumbs up appearing on my screen, so thank you very much for those. If you are watching after the live broadcast, please feel free to leave a comment or ask a question because I try to respond to all of those as well. And then regular viewers will know that these videos then also end up on YouTube. So if you are watching on YouTube and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. If you would like to leave a comment on YouTube, do that as well because I try to get round to all of them as quickly as I can. Uh, Vlad sent me lots of I hearts, so sending them right back at you. Thank you very much. Roxana said, maybe Gucci Guilty Oud next, and I think I think we probably will do that one next. Um, uh, Nathan says, good day from Oz. Um, is it already in morning in Australia then? I suppose it must be. How, how, what's the time difference? Gosh, well, Good good morning to you then. And I need I need to know what the time is in Australia now. Somebody some Nathan, tell me, please tell me what the time is in Australia. Ross has sent me um a lol face. <laughs> lol right back at you. And Aglia says, hello from Melting London. Yes, it's it's kind of melting here too. Oh, it's 1 a.m. in Oz. Um well I hope you haven't stayed up on my account, or maybe you are you're a night owl anyway, but if you have stayed up for me, then I very much appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah, melting here down on the south coast of England as well. I have no problem whatsoever with hot sunny weather, um, but when it's 
muggy and humid and cloudy and heavy, um, that's when things start becoming a little bit difficult. Um, but actually, it was with that kind of thing in mind that uh, I chose my classic scent for today. <clears throat> Um, some of you will be aware that for the last few episodes I have um, oh Ross says sorry for the lol malfunction that's fine you lol away it's okay I'm glad you made it as well a few of you will be aware that for the last few episodes of Love at First Scent I have tried to include a classic choice um, and today's one uh, is a perfume that I was shocked to find out is 19 years old so that gives you a little bit of a clue and it's also one of my go-to scents for when we have this sort of muggy humid weather so I wonder if any of you would be able to guess what it is I should just go back to Mr. Caromatic the first perfume we tried to see what uh, the official press material says about it right just pardon me while I get some information here um, because it's always interesting to find out what the brands say about the scent. Born from an unexpected collision of scents, oh, this is the general blurb about the exceptions, Les Exceptions are bold, intoxicating, and addictive fragrances that embody a new dimension of perfume by Mugler, the exceptional perfume. Yeah, okay. Evoking a garden in the south of France. Mystic Aromatic dazzles with a stunning contrast of hot and cold. <clears throat> okay, that was kind of the idea behind hot cologne as well, I think. An intense aromatic freshness contrasted by the potent hot notes of Peru balsam. Which, to give the scent its due, is probably the kind of thing that would come out more prominently on skin. Uh, the Les Exceptions Mugler Mystic Aromatic Fragrance is captured in an Art Deco inspired bottle that showcases, yes, yada yada yada, okay, we get it. And not much else. Um, there's a kind of soapy quality to it as well. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing unpleasant about it. And actually, even this would probably be quite good um, for an outing in the sort of weather we've got on the south coast of England today. But it's not exceptional. And, and this range works best when the perfumes really are exceptional. So before we go to the next one, and I make my tablet come back to life. Why is it not cooperating? Okay. Uh, to regular viewers, apologies that it took so long for this next episode to appear. A, a few of you may remember that the, the last one I did was, um, unless I'm mistaken, towards the end of May, and I said that it would probably not be possible for me to do another one until June, and I had fully intended to do one in June, but then, shall we say, family circumstances took over and, and I had to devote time to um, a, a certain sad family event that took place but at least now I can get things back on track. However, to, 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 to sort of put a spanner in the works, I am approaching what would normally have been the, my summer break from all things related to perfume. So because I feel I have neglected you and because I feel I owe you more of these videos, what I'm going to do is that the very next one is going to be this Sunday, so the day after tomorrow, but that's going to come out on YouTube Live, or go out on YouTube Live, I should say, and that will be at this same time as well. So it's going to be 4 p.m. UK time, which is um, 11 a.m. New York time, and as I now know, 1 a.m. Australia time, but on the next day. Um, so please try to tune in on Sunday at four in the afternoon UK time, on the Persilace channel on YouTube for the 18th episode. I can't believe we're going to be already up to the 18th episode of Love at First Send. And then that'll be your lot for the summer. I have also, some of you will be aware, I've also been doing <clears throat> a few one-off live videos on Instagram Live. Uh, the latest one of those has actually been was actually uploaded to YouTube a few days ago. So if you go to the YouTube channel, you should find it. Another one will be going up on YouTube. And actually, I may as well mention to you now that the last Instagram live video was on this brand, a really, really exciting brand that isn't actually all that new. It came out towards the end of 2016, but it's new to me. It was new to me last week. It's called Parle Moi de Parfum, and all of the perfumes in it are made by a master perfumer, uh, a chap that many of you will have heard of called Michel Almarac responsible uh, for the original Gucci Pour Homme from the Tom Ford era, uh, Gucci Rush, Gucci Rush 2, uh, the, the recent Bottega Veneta signature scent, uh, Paloma Picasso's Minotaur, 
at least partly responsible for Dior's Fahrenheit, a serious giant of perfumery. And he and his sons have got together to create a brand, and they've called it Parlement de Parfum, and pretty much every single perfume that they have released in that brand so far is worth your time. But there is more about that on the Instagram live video, which will be uploaded to YouTube in due course, probably in the next two or three weeks. So, I think we need to move on. And as we had a very, very um, polite, kind request from Roxana that we should do Gucci Guilty Oud, I think that is precisely what we should do. Now, disclaimer, I have already smelt this once. So this is not this. This is one of the times when I cheat and I actually um, spray things that I have tried before. But it was only brief and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and I don't know why I was pleasantly surprised this time because, of course, Gucci Guilty Absolute from last year, was it from last year, was one of my favourite perfumes of the year. Um, completely seemed to come out of nowhere with a genuinely, genuinely interesting, unusual forest fire petrol doused leather accord um, and very, very, very different from the kind of mainstream stuff that Gucci has been releasing and this was interesting too so please don't be put off by the fact that it says oud because as you know anything can be done well in perfumery even ouds and gourmands and this is the next chapter of the Gucci guilty story and it is an oud and if my initial wearing was anything to go by or my initial smell because the sniff because I, I, I didn't um, wear it it's worth your time as well so Second perfume of the day. Right. Has to be said from the start, it doesn't reinvent the wheel as far as oud perfumes are concerned. So this is very much trying to play that standard smell of a shopping mall in Dubai accord in, in the sense that it is, it is a rosy leathery patchouli and it does that rose leather patchouli thing that we have smelt quite a few times before um, but if there is one thing that it does differently is that it has a quite unexpectedly prominent note of cumin and not that I planned this but in much the same way that some of the ingredients that or some of the structures that make up the Mugler exception sense in much the same way that they need skin to bring out their full complexity cumin is also a note that really doesn't come out in its fullness um, until it's applied on skin that's also partly why um, it, it its presence in a perfume can be tricky because because cumin really does work significantly differently on different people's skin. Uh, on some people it works beautifully and it, 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 it seems to really accentuate and bring out the other facets of the perfume in an interesting way. And on some people, as Roxana has just indicated, it just comes across as, it just sort of tips over into the wrong side of sweaty. Um, and it's difficult to know or to predict how it's going to work on you. Now the the perfume that uh, that I think of instantly, and a lot of you will be will will have tried this one in the past, I'm sure, that really really pulls no punches when it comes to the sort of oud cumin combo, is the Al Oud from L'Artisan Parfumeur from a few years ago. I mean that is almost actually a cumin perfume as much as it is anything else. The Gucci is is nothing like that. Um, I guess the Gucci was never going to be quite so out there because that that the the, the Latisan Al Oud is is one of their most out there perfumes as well. I mean, it really really is quite uncompromising. When it works on somebody, it's fantastic, but it quite often doesn't work on people, um, which is why I was actually quite pleased that in the Latisan rebrand, it was it was still retained. Um, so this isn't this the, the Gucci isn't like that at all, but the Cuban note is there, and. If almost just for that reason, I think again, thumbs up Gucci and thumbs up um, the chap whose name has completely slipped my mind. It's Michele, isn't it? Isn't it Alessandro Michele, who's um, their creative director, who apparently is taking a very, very active interest and playing a part in, um, yeah, Alessandro Michele. I thought it was. Um, he's he's playing a very, very active role in 
the 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 the, the personality of the perfumes that they're releasing and I think um, Gucci Guilty Absolute was the first one that he made a contribution to um, and my mind's just not functioning today what's the what's the was it is a bloom somebody help me out was a bloom the ladies one that they released that was um, a sort of white floral it was bloom wasn't it which is again for the mainstream a very very good white floral uh, so what can we say about Gucci Guilty Oud under Alessandro Michele's creative vision master perfumer Alberto Marias who I believe also made Gucci Guilty Absolute reinterprets the distinguished resin of the distinguished resin of oud in a contemporary rendition the oriental scent is combined with the signature notes of gucci guilty absolute pour homme and pour femme okay it doesn't really fully reinterpret it but it it, it does a good job of representing what's familiar with a bit of a twist uh, mysterious and elegant gucci guilty oud is inspired by a walk in a forest okay what kind of forest smells of oud and cumin um, do you get cumin growing in forests? Um, top notes of blackberry, pink pepper and Bulgarian rose reflect the wood's romantic aura. This isn't romantic. This is too dirty to be romantic. But then, hey, you know, maybe some people like their romanticism dirty. While the misty shaded areas are expressed through earthy notes of golden wood. That's probably, yeah, well. That was the wood that they sent to the Midas factory before they used it in perfumery. Um, patchouli and Cypriol. The blend of dark ambery notes, leather and natural oud. Oh, I love how they say natural oud. Hmm. Add an enigmatic feel to the scent. The result is an exotic, smoky, sensual and leathery fragrance. Roxana says, I should have written is Gucci oud sweaty. Um, I, I, I thought that's what you meant anyway, Roxana. Um, the answer to that is it could be, but it would probably be, I would imagine it would probably be just the right side of sweaty. And there is a right side of sweaty, I think. There is a side of sweaty that's actually quite alluring. Um, clean sweaty, I guess, um, as opposed to dirty sweaty. But then, I, you know, one person's alluring is another, another person's repulsive. So, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure lots of people would also find dirty sweaty quite alluring. But this gets a thumbs up. Um, is it exotic and uh, I don't like the word exotic I really really try to steer away from the word exotic when it comes to describing perfumes but the the closest one like I said that I can think of is Latizan's um, Al Oud and top marks to Gucci for bringing this into their range because I can think of very very few other mainstream brands that would actually do this. So well done Gucci, well done Alessandro Michele, and, and also of course well done the master that is Alberto Marias. So how are we doing for time at the 23 minute mark? I'd Seriously, I have no idea where the time goes with these things. I would also like to bring to your attention another trio of scents that I have already tried before, um, but they're genuinely interesting and, and you need to be aware of them. It's this trio that you can see here the multicolored boxes and some of you will have seen if uh, you're watching on a large enough screen that they are from Miller Harris now Miller Harris um, is currently undergoing quite rapid development they're opening all sorts of uh, a large number of boutiques in London they're trying to make the boutiques very different from each other their boutique in Covent Garden which I haven't seen I have to say yet, but I hope to see it is, is almost like a sort of modern art installation and, and, and the plan is for it to uh, showcase work by different um, artists every now and then and sort of have a, 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 a rolling program of artists work and their most recent addition to their range is inspired by of all things foraging um, going through an urban setting an urban landscape and trying to find the little nooks and the crannies where um, nature has managed to exert some sort of influence and where interesting th plants and herbs that would otherwise be overlooked um, have managed to, 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 to grow some roots and, 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 start, and start flourishing. Um, and that was the, the brief that was sent to the two perfumers. One of these is made by 
Bertrand du Chauffour, and the other two are made by Mathieu Nardin. Um, I'm just going to pause for a second because Ross has asked a question. By the way, do feel free to ask questions. I need to look it up on my um, tablet, Ross. Do you know if there's anywhere I can get samples of any of these scents? As a 24-7 carer, I can't get to shops or towns, would like to check them out. That, that's not easy, Ross. And, and actually, you know, we can, we can have a discussion going on in the background. For those of you who are watching, or maybe who have, those of you who are watching after the live broadcast and would like to send a comment to Ross, finding uh, samples when you don't have easy access to shops uh, is tricky. Um, I personally, or I don't know if this would be of, of help to you, but I use uh, Lucky Scent for samples. Yes, they are based in California, but they have an excellent sample service. Trouble is, you have to pay a fair amount for postage and packing, so do check them out. Um, I don't know what Les Enter, the shop that's in London, do anymore with samples. They certainly used to have a, a sample service where, um, at a cost, I, I think that what they asked is that you pay for postage and packing, and then you could have X number of samples. So check out their website to see what they do. Bloom Perfumery. Um, definitely have a sample service but I don't know if it's a postal one so if you look up Bloom Perfumery which is uh, in Covent Garden um, that you may have some luck there but it's it's not easy it's not easy so for instance with Miller Harris um, pass I don't I don't know it would be worth looking on their website uh, or maybe writing to them to see if, if, if there is anything they would do there's also a, a German based um, perfume shop whose name escapes me at the moment but if you go to persalays.com there is a link there is a shopping link and I'm pretty sure I've put that shop in there I think it's called Aus Liebe zum Duft or something like that or First in Fragrance they certainly used to do an excellent sampling service and they still might but again you'd probably have to pay a little bit for postage and packing but I suppose maybe it's better to pay, some, pay something and, and, and have a few samples than, than not have anything at all. So I hope that answers your question, but if anybody else has any more answers for us, then do feel free to join in. Go back to foraging. The three of them are quite different from each other. We don't have time to go through all three, but I would like to uh, spray this one here that I've placed at the top. The color is a clue. Um, Oh, Nathan says surrender to chance is good too. Yes, actually, good point. I'd forgotten them. I personally have never used them, but I know lots of people rate them. So check out surrender to chance, Ross. Um, but you're right, there aren't many places out there that do sampling services. Um, I was also going to mention this, the Perfume Society, um, right at the end, but check them out. The only thing with the Perfume Society is that you very often don't have a... It, it's not like you've sort of got a list of samples that you can choose from. They curate sample sets, um, but I'll come back to that because I wanted to mention the the masculine scents box from the Perfume Society later. So this is uh, brand new from Miller Harris. It's called Wander Through the Parks, or I suppose we can just call it Wander. Um, and it, this one is by Mathieu Nardin. Um, the bases actually is quite interesting, even though I'm not into packaging particularly. The bases are made um, from all sorts of different recycled materials. And I forget which one it was, but there was one that was made from recycled milk containers and all of that kind of thing. Miller Harris are trying to move into this you know, current era of sustainability. Uh, so they're trying to do make their packaging from recycled materials, etc, etc. This one was interesting, Wonder. I'll just spray it actually so I can refresh my mind. Have any of you, what, what, what do people think of Miller Harris as a brand? I think, it, would, it be, would it be fair to say that it sort of went through a bit of a, a sad period when Lynn Harris actually left? Um, it was founded by Lynn Harris, but she doesn't really have anything to do with it. Now she works on her own brand, which is called Perfumer H. Very, very interesting brand. Um, Ross, actually, if you haven't tried anything by Perfumer H, they are definitely one shop to contact to see if they do any samples because Lynn Harris's work for her own brand Perfumer Age tends to be interesting if nothing else. Anyway, this is Wanda from Miller Harris and yeah, here we go. I will tell you in a moment what it's meant to be. I am not going to lie to you. I had no idea that it was meant to be what it was meant to be because I've never really smelt the thing that um, it's meant to be, although I have touched it many a time. Um, so what I got 
from an initial wearing, an initial sniff, is a super sharp, but still completely attractive, peppery note. Um, maybe black pepper, maybe white pepper. Almost fizzing. Um, almost laced with with banana skin. If you, if you can sort of imagine this weird combination of pepper and banana, um, that's what I kind of get from this. And there is a whiteness to it, uh, maybe because I'm thinking banana, maybe because because with banana I never think yellow, I always think of the actual banana flesh, which is I guess a sort of off-white, creamy white. Uh, the, the pepper smells, if, there, if it is a peppery note, smells quite white as well. And then there's a sort of definite grassy greenness, but it's not, you know, freshly mown grass. Um, so it's super outdoorsy, completely, completely fits with the idea of wandering through parks, you know, maybe the scent of clover. But what's wonderful is that it has edge. And I was talking to somebody the other day, and I thought that this would, this could, the, 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 the type of person that I picture in my mind is a young woman or maybe a sort of older teenage girl who is walking through the street with I, I guess a kind of punk attitude, a, a, a neo-punk who is wearing torn a torn denim skirt or torn denim shorts and is walking around with jet black dyed hair and has got lots of badges and brooches and pins on a jacket <laughs> and I'm picturing her almost like as a manga character but also maybe as a character from the 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 pop band Gorillaz you know the band that was created by Damon Albarn and and the artist whose name I can't remember this has got that kind of modern contemporary punky attitude and yet it's not aggressive it's just a little bit edgy and it's fun um, and I really, really loved smelling it, but also with my geek hat on, I think this is part of a growing trend for a different sort of fresh perfume. I think people are thinking that, you know, quite rightly, that we have had many, many citrus fresh scents out there and also floral, fre <laughs> floral fresh, floral light. And if you think back to perfumes like Apsu from Ulrich Lang, fantastic fragrance, which also had a kind of strange watery green note, also quite peppery, also quite banana-like. And then the other one that comes to mind is also Panorama from Olfactive Studio, which brought in a really great wasabi note. And of course wasabi is, is piquant and peppery and green and pungent and weird. Um, I think people who want to do something fresh and bracing but don't want to play it safe seem to be going for this sort of uh, structure. And maybe we are able to have these sorts of scents because um, the wizards in all the um, aroma chemical creation labs have come up with new greens and new peppers and new sharp notes. Maybe, maybe this is a sort of example of things being led by technological developments, but whatever. Um, it's a trend that I welcome because um, it is producing some genuinely interesting, innovative, unusual scents. Now to tell you what it's meant to be. Apparently what it is meant to be is the smell of stinging nettles. Because if you, sm uh, hence the connection with foraging, right? Because any of you who know anything about herbs and how um, uh, useful various sorts of herbs will be, will know that um, stinging nettles um, are considered to be an incredible herb by lots and lots of people who are into that kind of thing. And it seems that if you smell stinging nettles, I think it's if you sort of snap the leaves or maybe it's the stems, you get a smell that is very much like this. I haven't tested that assertion just yet, um, but I have absolutely no reason to uh, not believe it. Anyway, the press materials about uh, the, the, the foraging range, and this is interesting. From the city's rooftops to the hidden lush green spaces of the capital, London perfumers Miller Harris have secured the furthest reaches and hidden enclaves of the urban landscape to bring together hidden on the rooftops, lost in the city, 
and wander through the parks, three innovative and highly evocative fragrances inspired by the concept of urban foraging. Foraging, or the gathering of wild food, has been essential throughout human existence and has enjoyed a resurgence of interest over recent years with the rise of the creative foodie movement. It seems like a very hipsterish thing to do, isn't it? Oh, I see this plant growing through the cracks in the pavement. I shall eat it. In the countryside, the wealth of wild ingredients is obvious. However, when one knows where to look, there are hidden treasures to be discovered in the city too. Any foragers out there amongst you? Our perfumers set out on a mission to create fragrances inspired by ingredients which can be discovered growing wild in London, and this initial series of three fragrances are their interpretations. The starting points of a wider range of urban foraging inspired scents, each of these perfumes presents a dynamic contrast between nature and the built environment and also examines the ways in which the two creatively coexist. So let's get to Wonder and it comes with a little poem and I have no idea if the poem was written specifically for these or whether it's, it's a poem that you know was or had already been published. Wander through the parks. Long enough your vision changes. One day I saw the wood, the next the trees, then all at once all the life that grows beneath the leaves. And now I can't stop looking. Knowledge grows wild and stings like nettles. Now it says strings like nettles, I wonder if that's a typo. Although I quite like the idea of knowledge stringing like nettles. The poem is also on the packaging and it says stings so we'll say there's a typo on the press release. Never mind, I like, I like the idea of knowledge stringing like nettles. So they bring in this nettle idea. Stinging nettles, as it says, spring up all over London, producing a unique sparkling green scent. Who knew? Before they flower, their spiky greens are smoothed. The sappy earthiness of the stems blend with zesty fruits. Uh, and just a few, you know, list of notes. The head is pink grapefruit, juicy mandarin, blackcurrant, pink berries. Yeah, I'd, and I go along with all of that. And then the heart is galbanum, the nettles, Indian tuberose. Okay, maybe just kind of giving it a roundedness. This is not a tuberose perfume, so don't worry if you're kind of freaking out, thinking I don't want another tuberose. And then finally, lasting impressions, as they say. I like that instead of you know base notes. Violet leaf, cashmere wood, which usually means cashmere. Ran, a patchouli fraction and musk but yeah then the main thing is you you get is this green sharpness so thumbs up for this one i need to have a, a little bit more time with the other two i can tell you that the pink one is a rhubarb one a very very good tart sharp and yet suitably pink rhubarb the blue one i need to spend a little bit more time with it's by bertrand du chauffeur and um i always um like giving plenty of time to anything made by him so you're all being very quiet. Is there a football match on? Or did I not give you enough warning of the fact that I would be doing this today? Because normally I have lots and lots more questions. If you're not watching live because the weather's good and you're taking advantage of it, that is perfectly fine. I do not blame you one bit because these videos are always available after the fact. Um, but if you're sort of bored out of your skulls, then say so and we'll try to do so. Oh, look. Very kind. As soon as I say that, a few hearts go flashing up. Thanks very much indeed. So, we're almost at the 40 minute mark anyway, uh, uh, which is the point where I say thank you very much for tuning in. Oh, it's Wimbledon, Roxana, and Heatwave suffering. <laughs> Fine, you are forgiven. Who's play? Who's who's what? You know who's playing Wimbledon? And I should have thought about that actually, shouldn't I? And is there a football match on Sunday at four o'clock? Never mind. Um, Ross says, I'm listening attent intently and assembling an office chair. <laughs> is it an Ikea office chair? No, you're fine. Don't worry. I just suddenly thought, is this even going out? Is anybody even watching this anymore? Uh, this is episode 17. Yes, episode 17 of Love at First Send with me, Persilase, uh, going out live on Facebook. And uh, so if you would like to give me a thumbs up or a heart or ask a question please feel free to do so uh, but if you're watching after the live broadcast and you would still like to ask a question that is fine because i try to answer all of them and if you're watching on youtube please feel free to leave a comment there as well because i usually get round to answering every single one we have reached the point in the broadcast where i bring out a classic scent and i gave a few clues and i didn't have any guesses as to what it might be i said that it's the kind of thing that i reach for uh, when the weather is as hot and muggy as it is today and that also it is 19 years old so 
I'm not going to wait to see if there's going to be any more guesses. The classic scent for today, and I, when I looked at the list of classic scents that I've done, I couldn't believe that I haven't yet done a Guerlain, so I thought it's high time to do a Guerlain. It is the Aqua Allegoria Herba Fresca, or, you know, I suppose we're supposed to say Herba Fresca from Guerlain, from, oh, for Hard Shahid, who might that be? Says, love the t-shirt, you're not having it. I love it too. And actually, I was quite impressed. It looks very good on the screen, I think. This was bought at the Middle East Film and Comic Con, but I think it's an American uh, setup that do these t-shirts, and it glows in the dark. How amazing is that? So I have a Doctor Who t-shirt with a little Matt Smith Doctor and a TARDIS, and it glows in the dark, and no for Hodge, you're not having it. So, Herba Fresca from uh, the Aqua Allegoria range from Guerlain. Um, I am going to respray it, even though I don't need to. I know exactly what this smells like. It is, quite simply, one of the best fresh set. Farhaj says, I'm jealous. I know you are. You're still not having it. Um, well, I might let you borrow it. No, actually, I'm not letting you borrow it. You're not having it. Wouldn't fit you anyway. <laughs> um, in case anybody's wondering why I'm being rude to a listener, I'm allowed to be rude to him. I've known him since I was about 10. So there you go. Anyway, this is... Oh, suddenly the temperature actually goes down. It's amazing. This, 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 this Guerlain is still one of the best antidotes for hot and muggy weather. It actually seems to cut through clouds. I don't know exactly how it does it. It could be because it's got this fantastic, sharp, and yet totally palatable, um, accessible mint note, but it never smells like the mint that you smell when you go into the, you know, like shower gel aisle at your supermarket, which is always the danger with uh, any composition that's mint based. Um, it never ever does that. And I think it's because it has so many facets that just kind of pull it in all sorts of different directions so that it ends up being more than the sum of its parts. And it was made in 1999 officially credited to Jean-Paul Garlin and also Mathilde Laurent, um, but I think the sort of received wisdom in the industry is that Mathilde Laurent really did most of the work on it. Supremely talented perfumer. Um, she is now, as a lot of you will be aware, the in-house perfumer at Cartier and consistently does very, very, very interesting work there. And she actually revisited this idea of the super green, super fresh, and yet somehow never citrusy structure. She re revisited that in the the Hours collection for Cartier, the Les Heures de Cartier, and I think it was Leur Vertueuse, I, but I forget which number it was, whether it was the third hour or the fourth hour, but it was definitely Vertueuse. That's another superb one, but that one becomes quite lavendery. Whereas this is kind of like a mint that has arrived from outer space. It's like being transported by the doctor, um, this was not planned, transported by the doctor from, from a planet where the mint smells similar to ours, but has a kind of weird sci-fi twist. So that it's kind of chewing gum, it's kind of galbanum and peas, it's kind of grassy, and it's also kind of crystalline sugary. There is very definitely a sweetness here, and I think maybe that's the thing that stops it becoming like um, like like mint shower gel. Um, and you can never quite put your finger on it, because, I mean, like, right now, for instance, I'm getting a very, very prominent floral note, almost something like sweet pea and freesia. And even though it's an aqua allegoria, and I, what I mean by that is that the idea behind these was that they were supposed to be quite straightforward dual accords. You know, these were not supposed to be over complex, over demanding perfumes, even though it is part of that range. It doesn't shy away from the responsibility or the duty to to do a damn good job and, act and actually give you something that is worth your time. I have yet to smell anything else like it. Um, I don't know whether that's just because people haven't been able to, to try or whether they have tried and they've thought, well, we still can't beat Herba Fresca, so why bother? For all I know, it is still 
very very oh Alain says Le Vertu was three thank you very much so beautifully green with Artemisia yeah it was just fantastic I love it I love it and I'm so pleased that I finally managed to get a full bottle because it is by far one of my favorites from that Cartier range and I may even actually wear it tonight I'm going out for a meal with uh, some colleagues actually um, and that could be the kind of thing that I might wear or I might just wear this but I will not be wearing the Doctor Who t-shirt I'll be wearing something a little bit more serious um, the other uh, what, are, what are some of your favorites from the Aqua Allegoria the the other one that I really love as well is Pomplelume which I think is also by Mathilde Laurent probably still the best grapefruit scent ever done uh, Roxana says Herba Fressa but it lasts I think it does don't you I definitely think it lasts. Um, I think it's probably because there's a very, very good use of musks in the base. It, it lasts on me. Um, but you know, I always do this thing of uh, wearing perfume on both skin and fabric. We were talking about this earlier. Um, with some perfumes, you need to be careful uh, because some perfumes can stain, even though most of the perfumes that will stain your clothes, you can actually wash the stains off usually. Let's get let's give this pride of place here. Um, but yeah, I would say it lasts. Do you think it doesn't last on you then? And, and even though I tend to use it when it's really hot, it lasts. So that's my classic choice for today. Uh, and before we do a final perfume, uh, just very, very, very quickly, I mentioned the fact that I did an Instagram live video the other day which featured Parlement de Parfum. So watch out for that on YouTube at some stage within the next two or three weeks. And before we do a final perfume, I'd also like to mention this. Now, those of you who are not based in the UK may not be aware of the Perfume Society, even though maybe they do ship things out outside the UK now. Um, I won't tell you a huge amount about the Perfume Society because you can find out everything you need to know online, so just Google Perfume Society. The main thing I would like to say today is that every now and then they do these very, very neat sample boxes. And this is the uh, latest one with men's scents in them. Once a year, round about uh, Father's Day, they... Thumbs up to you as well, Peggy. What's the thumbs up for? Is it just because you felt like doing a thumbs up? In which case, thank you very much. Here's another one for you as well. Um, uh, round about Father's Day, they do a men's one. And you don't get to choose what goes in them, but that's fine. Um, and you get, in this rather cool box, which is reusable and um, you can do other stuff with, you get a whole, right, let me just try and do this carefully without tipping everything out. Does that work? Yeah, that kind of works. It also gives me a white beard. Uh, Peggy says, not the boxes, something about regs and posts. What do you mean? I don't understand. Okay. Uh, you get a whole load of samples. You do pay for this, but it's very, very good value. Um, and then in this one, for instance, what they've given as well is very, very generous uh, large samples. In fact, this may not even be a sample. This looks like a sort of travel a travel size. This is a Ted Baker shaving gel. You get a normal size, you know, as in a retail size, of an Eccentric Molecules uh, body wash. This one was of Eccentric 03. So, shout out to the Perfume Society. They do... Their boxes are so worth the money, says Peggy. Oh yeah, completely. Because, I mean, I should have checked out how much this one cost, and I'm really, really sorry, but you can find out for yourselves. But I'm guessing it was probably something in the region of 16, 17, 18 pounds. What I will try to do is... Oh, Peggy says regulations about sending perfumes out of the EU. Oh, it's a nightmare. Uh, uh, well, well, actually, you can't, can you? you? You can't, as a normal member of the public, go into a post office and send perfume anywhere outside the, U the UK at all. The only way that you can do it if you're, a, for example, a retailer who needs to ship some perfumes out is if you go and take a three or four day packaging course uh, for the packaging of dangerous goods. I believe it's something that you have to do up at Gatwick or Stansted somewhere. Uh, you can't. I used to send perfume. 15 quid for members, says Peggy. Yeah, I thought it was round about that. Thank you very much indeed, Peggy. Um, I used to send perfume regularly as a gift to you know, to family for Christmas, for birthdays, and I used to send it abroad because I have lots of family abroad. Uh, absolutely can't do that anymore. And I know that some people chance it. You know, some people stick a perfume bottle in, in an envelope and then don't tell the post office that that's what they're sending. Uh, 
but my understanding is that every single parcel that is sent out of the country is scanned and, and the scanners are able to identify if they contain perfume and the parcel is either destroyed or returned to sender. Um, but yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is very sad, I think, but then I don't know what the safety issue is that caused it. I believe that this is, this is just based on, you know, anecdotes and, and, and hearsay, so, you know, don't, th th this is not hard fact, but I believe that there was an issue with a laptop battery that caught fire on a flight once, and then that caused the authorities to look at dangerous goods, and they decided that, um, they decided, they realized that all this stuff here contains alcohol. So they suddenly thought, hmm, it's flammable. But the one thing that I've never been able to understand, and if there is somebody out there with the answer to this, and I'm really, really sincerely not asking the question cheekily, I would love to get an answer to this question is, how come it's okay to buy as many bottles of perfume as you want a duty free and then take them on board the flight how come it's all right to do that and have those bottles on the plane but it's not okay to have um you know to, to post bottles out uh because presumably all of those would travel by an aeroplane as well is there d d you know is, is there some kind of difference caused by the fact that some bottles are in the cabin um, although actually you're allowed to have perfume in your suitcase anyway, so no, that goes out the window. So you, you're allowed to have perfumes in your suitcase and they go in the hold. You're allowed to buy as much perfume as you want duty-free and they, that goes in the cabin. So why is it not possible to just post perfumes? I don't understand and I would love to have an answer to this. Um, Alain says, maybe I missed it, but have you reviewed Amouage's Man Imitation? Um, no, I haven't. but. I, I am going to, and I think that's going to be a written review, but I can give you a sneak preview. Both both Imitation Man and Imitation Woman are from me going to get two firm thumbs up. I think they are a real return to form for the brand. I like them very much indeed, but I think they are going to end up being um, written reviews. Peggy says, precisely, mega kaboom risk. Yeah, but is it though? And uh, Wukash says, Maybe it's because duty-free perfumes are carried on board in full packaging, unopened, never sprayed before. I guess, but what if then you sort of wrapped up a, you know, put a perfume in a parcel at the post office and showed that it's in, a, it's in its original packaging? Yeah, but, but that, that answers the duty-free question. I could have any perfume I want in my suitcase. You know, I could just put this in my suitcase next to, you know, my shirts and trousers and things, and it wouldn't be in its original packaging. And I don't know, there must be an answer to it. If if it, it genuinely is a, a safety issue, then yeah, let us not post perfumes, because the last thing that I want is for, a, you know, a parcel that I send to, to cause a, a major accident. But I also do sometimes wonder if it's um, people erring too far on the side of caution. Alain says, thank you, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in. We need to do a final perfume or yeah i think we have got time and i would like to go over here to juliet has a gun what do people make of that brand by the way in case you missed it next episode of love at first send coming in two days time so sunday afternoon 4 p.m uk time uh but on youtube and the reason why i'm doing it so quickly is because i'm actually approaching summer break time which is when i prepare loads of posts to be ready to go out on the blog and then I, I have nothing to do with perfume for, for a good few weeks. It, it's, it's almost like a kind of mental recharge and it's, it's, it's quite useful um, actually not thinking in that kind of geeky way about perfume and just enjoying it and then coming back afresh. Uh, Ross has got something to say about the issue we just raised about posting perfumes. He says, possibly because the perfumes you buy at the airport are sealed and they know precisely what's in the bottle. Posting liquids out does not prove the contents. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. But then how do you answer what I said about how I could put any perfume that I want in any weird dodgy bottle that I want in my suitcase? Um, there must be an answer. Anyway, the latest from Juliet Has a Gun is called Moscow Mule, as in the drink, which is the kind of thing that, of course, Persilades would never touch. Um, interesting brand, uh, Juliet Has a Gun. Um, fairly quiet, even though you would think that it would be quirky and out there and more prominent. Unless I'm mistaken, they have just opened their first boutique in Paris. 
And I think they're calling it a cafe, because of course retail spaces have to be a little bit more innovative um, than they were able to get away with in the past. It, it, everything's got to be about the experience. So I suppose the I, I don't know, but I suppose the idea must be that you're not just going to a Juliet has a gun shop, you are going to a cafe. I do like some of their work. I find some of it also quite forgettable, um, quite safe. Uh, their their founder and and perfumer is a chap called Romano Ricci, although I should qualify that. He does not call himself a perfumer. What he does, uh, and he said this to me in an interview, and I, but not just me, you know, he has gone on record as saying this, is that he does, he does formulate, uh, he does sit with his raw materials in his lab and put things together and try out different accords, but then he gets to a point where he says, okay, I quite like this, I like the smell, but now I need a professional perfumer with expertise to fix this and to actually turn it into something that can be bottled and is sold. And he has perfumer friends and he goes to them and they sort it out. So with a great deal of commendable humility, I think, he says that he cannot call himself a perfumer, even though he probably could himself could call himself a perfumer a lot more than other people call themselves perfumers who, 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 who don't deserve the label. This is Moscow Mule, which comes in your standard Juliet has a gun box. I know nothing about it whatsoever, um, even though I have got a press release, so I will look at that in a moment. This space is getting a little bit crowded, so hang on, let me just pop this to one side. Let's get a blotter, and this will be the one that we finish with. So this is also your last opportunity to ask any questions or leave any comments if you would like them to be answered live, otherwise they will be answered after the fact. Yale says, hi Press Lays, great to see you, Moscow Mule, wow. Why wow in particular? Well, have you tried this or are you looking forward to it? Let's go, right, okay. Initial spray of Juliet has a gun, Moscow Mule. I haven't tried anything from from this brand, which we affectionately call J Hag. Probably lots of people affectionately call it J Hag. Let's pop it here. Actually, let's get rid of the Gucci for a while so that this one gets a little bit of screen time. Okay. <laughs> Intriguing. I'm thinking hairspray and hair. Oh, you want to nuzzle up into this. Um, I hope that was the idea. This is interesting. This is really, really intriguing. Uh, looking forward to it because of, oh, and you, oh, Yale says why, because of the name. Right. Yeah, but I'm not getting, this is like, this is almost the smell of the seductive person drinking the Moscow Mule rather than the Moscow Mule itself. There's a kind of fizz at the top. It's very, very, very well blended. It, it, you, it's quite hard to pick anything out, which, and which is, I think, why it's drawing me in and I'm so intrigued. But what is it about it that's so seductive? I'm just, what does this say about me? I'm picturing, uh, does the Mule have a kick? <laughs> No, but it but it has a sly glance. Um, I'm picturing hair ads with these, you know, beautiful women tossing their hair left and right, and I'm just kind of going, ah, yes, Jennifer Aniston. I'm picturing Jennifer Aniston's perfect hair, Moscow Mule, because I'm worth it. Um, This feels like a real intimate skin scent. Um, quite sensuous. Somehow very, very, very attractive. And so is it warm or sweet? You know, I was actually just thinking that, is it warm or sweet? Because I'm thinking there's something about it that's quite cool, but there's also something about it that's very, very warm. I'm, I'm properly intrigued. This is the one that has intrigued me the most so far. Although I think if I had smelled the Miller Harris for the first time here, Peggy says not again, Jen. <laughs> I want to read about this. Sorry, I need I need to get the press thing because I want to find out what they actually were trying to do by this because I am I am properly intrigued. It's so exciting. <laughs> um, here we go. So where are we? Okay, so the press release starts with a quote from Romano Ricci. I had in my mind the idea of a fragrance that evoked the vibrations and euphoria of the famous Moscow Mule cocktail, a fresh and exhilarating composition that associates ginger with copper. C 
copper tone. Maybe that's why we're thinking of copper tone. Ginger, I did say fizz, didn't I? But fresh, I don't know, there's, there's, something, there's something a little bit too kind of evening, drinks at the bar. That, uh, these two elements inspired me for both the container and the formula. Ginger for the model feature in, in the campaign um, and her mysterious red hair colour. So they are talking, I think, about this person here. Not exactly who I was picturing, not really Jennifer Aniston's twin, but never mind. Um, and copper, because the cocktail is traditionally served in copper mugs. I did not know this. I thought the association had something elegant and worthy of a creation, and to illustrate the idea, I asked the famous photographer Alexander Straulino, known for his collage work, to illustrate the concept. Okay, tell us something about the perfume, Romano. Uh, the intensity and jubilation of the moment, like a remedy to escape the everyday routine, let's get ready to party, seems to suggest the sillage of the fragrance. No, this is the after party. This is the kind of... Um, Moscow Mule is made with ginger beer, says Peggy. Yeah, this is, this, yeah, uh, definitely a kind of gingery fizz here. But this isn't... This is post-euphoria for me. This is the kind of... That wonderful laziness at the, at the end of a fantastic night and just before the continuation of the fantastic night. As Alfred de Musset's saying goes, never mind the bottle as long as you get the euphoria. Cheers. Uh, here's again a very striking photo of the model. Can you see that? I'm trying not to get a reflection in there. Very good picture. Um, known for its antioxidant, don't put that word in a perfume press release, and aphrodisiac properties, ginger acts here as a vibrancy enhancer. Oh, the schoolboy in me wants to make a few jokes about a vibrancy enhancer, but never mind. Bringing a dash of excitement to the fragrance, just like Juliet with her blazing mane, free and uninhibited, who laughs at convention <laughs> and brings a toast to life. Okay, antioxidant aphrodisiac I can go along with. Uh, Peggy says the Alka-Seltzer effect for the after party. <laughs> very good. I like it. Very, very good. Now you're waking up, people, are you? I like that. And then apparently we have a zest of lime, a twist of ginger for the sexy side. I so don't like using the word sexy in relation to perfumes, maybe because it's been used, I don't know, about 27 million times too many. Um, a zest of lemon for the punch. The duo of top notes forms the essence of a fragrance that's certainly not lacking in freshness or vivacity. To complete the recipe, we have the tangy apple and the sparkling bergamot, a true stroke of brilliance, even though I say so myself. Vibrancy enhancer, go on about it. No. <laughs> Let's just say, you know, insert your own punchline that finishes with, or are you just happy to see me? Um, uh, Moscow Mule, a delectable fragrance, citrusy, floral, and woody served in a white and metallic bottle using the elegant copper of the mugs in which the cocktail is enjoyed. Hence, the copper cap, I think. Um, otherwise known as the... Copper vibrancy and no, no, just forget it. Uh, Moscow Mule's olfactory trail hypnotizes its audience as if it were inviting everyone to share over a glass of something, a timeless moment where tongues are loosened, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> and and bodies scalding hot. <laughs> okay, uh, the olfactory pyramid, and look, they've even made a little smiley face <laughs> out of the ingredients. Uh, so we've had the ginger, the lime, the bergamot, the loose tongues, the apple the extreme amber, etc, etc, and then just a bit of stuff. But anyway, all of that aside, okay, so perhaps not the most helpful press release we've ever had, but it it works. Um, I like it so far, um, but I think I would like to smell it on somebody else. So perhaps I'll sort of be sending it Madame Persolaise's way and say, well, why don't you wear this and let your hair down? Um, yeah, vibrancy enhancer. Um, Seriously though, the word vibration is becoming a perfume marketing buzzword in the same way as the word addiction is. So expect lots and lots of um, perfume adverts and the pros around perfume adverts, the blurb, to make reference to vibrations and, um, and addiction. And then that'll get boring and they'll move on to something else. Right, folks, we are done. I will just have a quick sniff of the blotters. Because I said I would, I'm just going to try and, um, well, try, I will spray a little of the bit of the mystic aromatic on skin just to see if anything 
particularly different comes out. Really boring looking bottle though, says Peggy. It's just the standard Juliet has a gun bottle. Um, yeah, see, it's already, it is actually doing something different on skin already. It's just, it's sweeter. I think, I think on skin it's sweeter. So those herbal aspects are there, but it's gentler and more, it is somewhat more intriguing. It goes without saying, by the way, you know, please, please, please remember, I'm only smelling these on blotters. These are initial impressions. That's the whole idea of these videos. And also I try to do a blotter update uh, in the comments um, at, the, at the bottom of the video to tell you how the blotters have progressed. So uh, let us have a quick look. Which one was this one? Oh, well, Herba Fresca we don't need to do, but any excuse to smell Herba Fresca. Oh, it's so good. It's starting to get, get into its woody phase now. The Gucci Oud. The Gucci Oud. I should have just called it Goud. Yeah, G O U D. Nice, nice work. We've smelt it before. The Cuban seems to have quietened down. Like I said, doesn't doesn't reinvent the wheel at all. But it's well done, and it certainly doesn't smell as crude and crass and vulgar as a lot of mainstream ouds do. Where's the? This is the. Oh, this was this was the Miller Harris. Hi, oh, yeah, really interesting actually, and it does have sting to it. Yale says, hang on Yale, sorry, I can't see your full comment, so I need to just bring it up on my tablet. Come on, work, product. Why can't I see comments? Here we go. And your comment hasn't even appeared on my tablet yet. I can read the start of it there. It says, I'll try the cocktail and hope they serve it in a pot copper vessel. Yeah, actually you should say that to them. Your comment hasn't come, the rest of the comment hasn't come up on the tablet. This is so annoying. And finally, oh, then, then it was Mr. Karamatic on the blotter. And yeah, it is significantly, but no, significantly is not the right word. It is definitely, but subtly different on skin. It still doesn't wow me. And it still doesn't come across as terribly interesting. Um, and here's a comment that I've missed. Yale, I have no idea why I can see your comment there in the screen in front of me, but not on the screen under my nose. I don't understand. But I've seen Aglia's comment. A few words about the new book by Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez. Huh. What do you mean a few words? Um, it, it's, it's late in the day. We're all, it's already almost an hour and ten minutes. I have been told that apparently there's quite a lot of controversy about their new book. I'm not aware of the controversy, um, and I haven't read it yet because I personally would like to uh, buy the paperback, and I will buy the paperback. I don't know what you guys think of their work, but I really, really rate it very highly, and I like it. But, but that doesn't mean to say that I feel I have to agree with every single thing that they write. Um, and I think they would be the first people to say that we don't have to agree with every single thing that they write. Maybe we should save this one for, you know, the topic for another day. I'm wondering what you're thinking, Aglia, because I'm, I've yet to find out what the controversy is. Is it because some of their opinions have turned out to be controversial or, 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 or have they stirred up some controversy themselves? I am blissfully ignorant of, of everything around it. But as you will probably not be surprised to hear, I am absolutely all for um, serious, considered engagement with perfume, and and I, I don't think we have enough of it, and I certainly don't think we have enough of people who are willing to, to write negative reviews about perfume, and I applaud the fact that Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez still do. Um, and without sort of knowing what the controversy is, I don't really know what else I can say on the matter, except that I will be buying the book and I, I'm sure I'll enjoy it and I'm sure I will not agree with all of it. And that's fine. Um, oh, this is the Moscow Mule, which is maybe turning a little bit safer, but still very interesting. So um, thank you very much for tuning in to the latest episode of Love at First Scent. I'm sorry you had to wait so long for it, but as I say, there were genuine issues 
um, and family circumstances that meant that I, 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 I couldn't do one in June. The next one, don't forget, is in two days time on YouTube uh, Live. So that'll be this Sunday, 4 p.m. UK time in 11 a.m. New York time. Um, so look after yourselves, enjoy the weather if indeed the weather is great wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank you very much for tuning in.